So the cowling is finally done. Took a while, but we've got it all functional and everything's working how it should. Um, so I'm gonna give you guys a quick rundown on all the different features of the cowling, kind of different things, how it works, and uh, we'll get going. So the cowling doors um, on each side uh, run from here all the way up to this piano hinge you can see running down the top. And uh, a lot of guys will run just a few fasteners down the side. Uh, my thing is I like to open the cowl every time I go fly and look around if you can. You know, there's a lot of airplanes that the cowlies can't come open between, uh, between oil changes and stuff like that without taking it off. Um, in this scenario, I wanted to be able to take it, you know, open it up, look without any tools just to check everything out. So what I've got is these Piper latches, one at the front and one at the rear, and they run these sky bolts quarter turns. So you just turn it and turn it, and then um, the latch pops open. This latch pops open, and then you're able to open it, and you can check out the whole engine from there. So, um, main reason for that is you know you can get in here, you can do oil changes, um, you can do everything you need from this side. So that's the that's the main gist on the cowl doors. So because we're operating West Africa in the Sahara Desert, I wanted to do everything I could to make this engine cool, cool well. I've got a video coming up that'll cover everything inside the engine bay with the plenum and all the stuff to keep it cool but the cowling is part of that as well. So I ran, ended up deciding to run four cowl flaps on this, which I think would be overkill most of the time, but when we're planning on flying in 100 degree plus temperatures fairly often, um, I decided to do everything I could to cool it. So we've got these cowl flaps on the side. Um, and then if you look in the back, you can see the linkages that are right here. So basically I drew these up in CAD um, and then uh, had them machined out and then I've got the uh, linear actuators in there. So there's one here, there's a pair of uh, cowl flaps down here on the bottom. You can see all the mechanisms down here. And then on the other side there's a matching one from over there. So the way these cowl flaps work is there's a button inside that runs through my programmed PDM. and so. This button has, the button has multi-functions that you can program in with the computer. So when you push it once, it turns yellow. What happens then is that your bottom cowl flaps open. So in that scenario, the way those are set up, that's gonna pull a ton of air through the oil cooler. Um, and so that's gonna help lower oil temps. And so you may want that in like a cruise climb or something like that, just to have a little bit of adjustability in your temperatures. And then the side cowl flaps, um, they open when you push the button a second time. So when you push it a second time, the button turns green. The reason for that is I like an airplane set up in a flow. And whenever I'm ready for takeoff, uh, I want the entire row across the top of that needs to be green. That's all your lights and everything. That means, hey, your airframe is set up for takeoff. And then on the left-hand panel, it's the same way left-hand panel has all the switches for the engine. Every switch should be up for takeoff, and that way you can do a really quick double check to make sure you've got everything where it should be. There's another safety built into this that I use micro switches in a lot of areas to just kind of idiot proof stuff because the Garmin has an awesome message center. And so inside that before takeoff, you're gonna look at that message center every time, and if something's not configured right, uh, it's gonna tell you that because of all the micro switches I've got hidden. I've got micro, micro switches on, um, all kinds of stuff in the airplane that need to be in a certain position for takeoff. So on one of these is cowl flaps. So when the, when the top flaps open, there's a little micro switch and that micro switch gets triggered and it uh, indicates that, hey, your cowl flaps are closed. So whenever you hit the button and open them, that goes away and you have no indication that your cowl flaps are closed and you've got a green light on the panel letting you know that you're good to go. So we've got one other door down on the bottom of the airplane. This door right here has two little sky bolts that you open. And whenever you open it, uh, you can see that we've got an air intake right here. So what's gonna be sitting right here that I don't have in right now is there's an air box that sits up in here. And the purpose for that is that it's a quick change air filter setup. So there'll be two latches you flip, you open the air box, slide your one filter out using K&N air filters, shove your next air filter in, latch them, and close that door. So that lets you change the air filters without having to drop the lower cowling because the lower cowling isn't gonna get dropped at oil change. And because we're operating in a super nasty environment, I wanted the ability to change air filters at least at every oil change, if not in between, without having to uncowl the entire airplane every time because I'm the one that'll be flying this airplane, I'm also the one that'll be maintaining this airplane. And what I know is that 
I won't want to uncowl the whole airplane just to change an air filter. So um, in this scenario, we're set up to do that. So the next door is this door right here in the top, and this is our oil door. So if you flick that, it opens up, and then right inside you can see our uh, oil dipstick. So it's super cool, just a little press latch, nice little flippity flip on it. Give her a pat and you're good to go. So I think that's about the cleanest way to do a uh, oil door. And then with the plenum inside, it's got a nice seal and everything where you can reach down in. If you spill any oil, it doesn't go all over the motor. It just gets caught in that little ball right there and you can clean it up. So down here across the bottom, you can see a carbon fiber lip that comes across and uh, it's tied into the firewall here and here and then holds the structure of the lower door. So with those big uh, cowl flaps down there on the bottom, I needed some structure and some rigidity to the rear section of that cowling. So I built that and it also create a little bit of lift to make some negative pressure uh, for cooling. But the main purpose was to create structure at a light, as light as I could with some super heavy structure to hold its shape whenever those cowl flaps are deflecting because there's a lot of air pressure on those cowl flaps and it needed really good structure to hold its shape. So this nose bowl is not the standard bear hawk nose bowl. Well, it started out as one, but I heavily modified it. So this started out as your standard bear hawk nose bowl, but as you can see, this part right here is way wider um, and there's also a scoop. So what I ended up doing was this nose bowl was set up for a 14 inch spinner, um, which is awesome if you have a propeller with a 14 inch spinner. I'm running a Kato setup and it has a 13 inch spinner and I really like the spinner. It's this really beautiful, super lightweight honeycomb carbon setup. They do an absolutely fantastic job on them. But the problem is it's 13 inches and the nose bowl is 14. I almost made myself just deal with it. You could kind of tell that it wasn't quite the right size, but you know, it would have worked. And I think there's people that do it. And there's no structural reason you can't, it's just a looks thing. And so I decided I didn't want to, I didn't want to look at it and it was going to annoy me every time I looked at it. So what I did was I basically built a ring and I'll pop a picture up. I expanded it and I extended that nose bowl another two inches right here. So basically your factory nose bowl would end right here. I added two inches into it and then body worked the whole thing into it. So by doing that, I was able to over a two inch stretch, taper that whole thing down by an inch, an inch total, half inch on each side. And uh, what you ended up with was actually a pretty cool looking nose bowl with kind of a little bit of a long nose look to it. Fits the spinner really, really well. Um, allowed me to space some good fasteners in across there. Um, highly recommend these. These are Skybolts uh, washers. They basically take a, uh, a countersunk screw and they give you a nice wide area of pressure for composite work. So um, that's what I did with the spinner setup. The next is this, uh, this scoop. And a lot of people have been asking about that. So if you look at that, it goes in, you take this scoop and it goes into three. This center hole right here goes directly into my air box and directly into the intake. So we get ram air effect on the air coming in. Uh, it helps us maintain manifold pressure and all that kind of stuff. These two uh, both go into a three inch scat. And I'm gonna cover this in my next engine video, but basically I have two three inch scats that run down under the bottom of the motor. And then I have an air plenum on a big 17 row oil cooler back at the back, right in the tunnel. And so what that lets me do is I have it split in half down the middle. I'll, I'll pop a picture up of that plenum real quick. But basically you have one three inch that goes in one side, one three inch that goes in the other. It's a ton of air. Then you also get a little redundancy there. If one scat comes off, you knock a hole in it, something weird happens, you still have a big three inch scat blowing into the oil cooler on the other side. You're not gonna lose all your oil cooling. So that is the scoop. That scoop was an absolute pain. Basically I cut the bottom out. Um, you know, this was just, this whole nose ball here looked about the same. And I cut a big oval out of it. And then I molded this out of uh, carbon fiber and foam. And then I body worked it and body worked it. So I think the nose turned out fantastic. Honestly, I think I probably have about a hundred hours of body work and carbon work and all the above into getting that nose bowl to look like it does. But now that I'm done, I honestly think it was worth it. But at the time I was not enjoying it. So that's the gist on the cowling. If you guys have any questions, let me know and uh, we'll catch you in the next one. We're getting really close to inspection. These videos are running behind where they actually are. And I've got some backlog videos from stuff. You'll see the airplane will be more blown apart in them. Um, but th we're getting ready for inspection and uh, 
can't wait to get it flying. See you on the next one.